I remember thinking, wow, uh, I've died and gone to heaven. So many people I knew who loved golf and idolized golf, what they would pay to be in that position and what they would give to have that opportunity to stand there and just look out there. The Masters is like Wimbledon, it's like Yankee Stadium, it's like Toronto Maple Leaf Gardens or the Montreal Forum. There's something so unique about it. When you're coming up the road to the club, Magnolia Lane, oh my God, it's just incredible. And the grass is greener, the fairways are bigger. You come off Washington, which doesn't really feel like you're about to drive into the prettiest place in the world, and then Magnolia Lane is the prettiest driveway in the world. But this amazing framing, this tiny little bit of this white clubhouse that we kind of know so well up the end. And you get these little glimpses, there's these little kind of walkways through the, or the gaps between the buildings and stuff. And you kind of see some grass and you see some trees. And I just remember locker room straight to the windows and just seeing over, I just stared at it for like 10 minutes, I think. It was a pretty cool experience. Scared to take a divot on the first few holes. Pretty normal stories, I think, for most guys. Augusta National is really my favorite golf course on the planet. The formality of the place. At first, you feel like it's a little standoffish. It's kind of like that strict disciplinarian teacher that you had, that at first, you were so afraid of them, but then they turned out to be your favorite teacher over all the years. That's kind of the way I look at Augusta National Golf Club. You're never gonna have the same round. It's, it's the most diabolically incredible, ingenious, I mean, it's, it's beauty. First time was whenever I was playing at University of Georgia. Never forget stepping up on the tee, and I was the first one to hit, shaking in my boots. I just kind of toe, kind of pushed Drew it to the fairway. I was like, all right, we got the first fairway, we're on the row. The guy I'm playing with, he steps up and he hits his drive. He hits it so low and off the heel, it doesn't get five feet off the ground. It almost hits the thing that sticks up with the pencils and everything in it. It comes literally within a foot of hitting that and ends up almost in the scoreboard to the right. It was one of the worst shots I've ever seen in my life. It kind of loosened up the day and lightened everything up and we had a great time, but I'll never forget stepping up there the first time I ever played in my first round, actually as a professional, knowing that I'm playing. That Monday was just something else to step up on those grounds. It has so much history, but it's one of those events that when you actually get to play it, it's just, you know, it's a dream come true. I got the call that Mr. Cherkinian needed me in Augusta in 36 hours. The camera crew had missed a connection. They were going to be delayed. And Frank said, well, there's only one thing you can do now. You're going to go out and play until they get here. I said, well, Frank, I'm in a jacket and a tie. Next thing you know, I'm on the first tee. No warm up, no time to like lose sleep the night before about hitting that first shot, and I was having the time of my life. Next thing you know, we're standing in front of the 16th hole and I'm reciting the line. It's a tradition unlike any other, the Masters on CBS. It's a great honor to have people think that you're associated with not only Augusta, but with that line.